Linda Shale from Waffle TV, and we're here today with Canadian poet and writer Shane Koizan. How are you? I'm excellent. You pronounced my name right. I'm yeah, astonished. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, tell us a bit about your show. Uh, the show is called Talk Rocker, and it's really just sort of a journey through the. This past year, I've focused a lot on re-exploring my childhood because I got bullied a lot, so I kind of blocked yeah. that those memories out. But this past year, I've been you know re-exploring that, and so that's really what the show is about. It's kind of a it's like taking people through a museum and I'm just curating. Here are the moments of my life and, you know, and what they meant to me. So. Yeah. so what made you want to get into poetry and writing? Is it something you've done from a very early age? No, God, no. I started off, I wanted to be a wrestler. And I thought, you know, oh, I'm going to be the garbage man. I'm going to take out the trash. I had my whole thing figured out. And then some guy stole my entire stick. So I was like, oh. where do I turn? Poetry. I actually started off in the... In school, I was supposed to be in the drafting program because I was a very shy kid. Yeah. I didn't, and it was drafting is very solitary. And then the class got filled up, so they bumped me alphabetically to the next program, which was drama. So I was like, <laughs> "Fuck, my life is over." But it actually turned out to be a blessing in disguise because it taught me how to be social with other yeah. people, and that's kind of what got me started with writing. Yeah. So tell us a bit. You've had uh, two published books, haven't you? Uh, actually, three. This is uh, the third. Yeah. yeah, the new one just came out. Our deathbeds will be thirsty. Yeah, the yeah they've all done remarkably well. I'm very happy. It's not often that you know a book of poetry claims a bit of the spotlight, but uh, it's done really well for me, so I'm pretty yeah, pleased. Good. So, how long have you been performing at the Fringe? Or is this your first year? This is my first year doing my first show at the Fringe. I've done the book festival a number of times here before, and I've toured through the UK doing various other festivals, but. Uh, the goal was really simple in terms of like just wanting to come and see how spoke and this was the first year that Edinburgh was doing a spoken word section of the fringe so I thought well if there's ever a year to go this would be the year and uh, it's been pretty remarkable so far it's been very telling of like you know what people are there's still that reticence in people they don't quite know what spoken word is and so they're you know they, they often ask well what is it you know it's like when people ask you what does it taste like and they want a comparison to something. Well, it doesn't taste like chicken. I don't know what else to tell you. Yeah. So you had um, an episode of uh, Heart of a Poet it was focused on your work, wasn't yeah. it? It was on Bravo. Yes. Uh, how did that come about? Um, well, I guess in Canada, there's a you know there's sort of a top tier of, of of poetry or spoken word, and spoken word was gaining a lot of momentum in Canada, and so Bravo just you know they. They, they sought out, you know, some of the top talent and they said, you know, we want to focus a special on all these different poets and I just happened to be one of those poets. All right, brilliant. Um, so you performed at the opening ceremony of the 2010 Winter Olympics in Vancouver. I did. Was that an amazing experience? That was a nerve-wracking, terrifying, unbelievable experience. Yeah. I don't know if anybody saw it, but I was on that huge sort of plinth type yeah. pillar and that thing, it looked sturdy, but it shook a lot. So, you know, when people were like applauding, it was like going, D -d 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 -d. and I was, oh, it was horrifying. Yeah. So yeah. did you study writing at all, or is it just something oh, yeah. you've done? Yeah. No, I studied uh, at uh, Okanagan University College, uh, with two writing professors, Nancy Holmes and John Lent. And uh, th I started off writing really horrible romantic novels <laughs> and shit like that, because I thought, oh, this will be the way to get women. Yeah. Um, but I never really finished anything, so it was always just like first chapters for things that would never, never work out. And so uh, both of my writing professors were like, why don't you try writing a poem, that way you'll know what it's like to start and finish something. And that's what got, and, it, and I realized through that I could really express parts of myself that, you know, that I hadn't before. Because it was me talking, not some character I invented. Yeah. You know? So it's just a, it's a one-man thing, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So is, is it like it's storytelling, isn't it? It's a it's a bit of storytelling for sure. It's a bit of poetry, you know. Um, I, I'd liken it very much to storytelling, and and there's quite a bit of comedy in it as well, you know. So, because you don't want to scare people, but you yeah. do want them to go on an emotional ride. Whereas, if you're going to see a comedian, go in preparing to laugh the whole time you're there. If you come in to see a spoken word artist or a storyteller, be prepared. <laughs> So not only to laugh, but to feel, you know, a deeper emotional, you know, sort of a deeper emotional impact where, you know, you're, you're really going on a journey with someone. Somebody's trusting you enough to take you with them into a part of their lives. And that's what the experience I want people to have at my show. So why should people come and see your show? Because it's awesome. <laughs>
Enough said. That's a good enough reason, Eddie. <laughs> um, no, I think uh, the best reaction so far that I've gotten out of people, like I mean, this is people coming out of the show afterwards, and I'm always hanging about at the door, ready to shake hands and stuff like that. Um, it's just. It's just the connection that people have with each other afterwards. They really, they come out of the show realizing that they're not alone. They're not just a single individual in the world. They're connected to everybody else around them. And that's kind of the way I've seen my life for a long time. And I just want people to experience that same thing. And I think that's what people are getting out of it. Oh, that's brilliant. It sounds really good. Um, it's your first night tonight, isn't it? No, Is no. It first, uh, we're one week in now. So the, right, okay. Today's officially one week in. We're going strong. We got a five-star review from the Scotsman. It's uh, yeah, things are lovely, and the people in Scotland are amazing. Yeah. They love beards, so I'm at it's home. A fantastic beard. Yeah, it really is something. You should see it in bed. It's remarkable. Well, thank you very much for coming and speaking to us. Cheers. Um, thank you. The show will be on until the 27th at Underbelly at Bristow Square at 7:30. I'm Lucinda Shell. You've been watching Waffle TV.